Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Lenovo LOQ 15i Gamer Laptop. This is gonna be the Gen 9 version. I'm gonna take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, open the computer up, show you all the various components you can access after you do, as well as shouting out their specs uh, so you know what you're looking at for replacements. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip the computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now you have these four screws along the bottom, one on either side near the middle, and then these four up top for a total of 10 screws. After you get those screws out, you're gonna take your small flat plastic pry tool. I say plastic because metal pry tools will tend to scratch your case a lot more than plastic ones will. And I would recommend starting in, in the back corners here. Uh, you're gonna pop it open, you're gonna go around this seam, pop the bo uh, bottom case up from the computer, then you're gonna go down each side, and then you're gonna finish up on this edge. This edge is the hardest to get off, so I would go from the back to the front on this computer. After you've taken your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm opening a computer, it's sitting on an anti-static pad. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on them. If you need any help with tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model computer, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, it'll have all those tools and replacement parts for the LOQ-15i. Now your battery is down here on the bottom. It's held in by four screws. You see these little white arrows with the M2X4L? There's one in each corner. You're gonna take all four screws out and then your battery plugs into the motherboard right here. Now, as you can see in your computer, there's a small grip on either side of that black plug. So you can use your fingernails or a pry tool and you can go one side at a time and pry that out from that plug. As with any computer plugs, you wanna avoid pulling on the wires as much as possible you wanna just manipulate that plug whenever possible. Now the battery information, this Lenovo battery had a model number of L23D4PK4. It was a 60 watt hour battery, 15.44 volts. Again, I'll have that information below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I'll also include a replacement battery option in that link that I told you about with all the tools and parts. If you notice here too, you'll see this extra space here to the left of this stock battery with a couple more screw holes there. This is for an upgraded extended life battery that's a little longer and it'll have six screws. These two, these two, and these two here. I'll also include one of those upgrade batteries in that link. Last side note for the video, if you're here because your computer's not turning on, if you're having power issues, it's possible that your battery is bad and needs to be replaced, but keep in mind that even when a battery is dead, the computer should still turn on and function with just a charger. So if your computer's not turning on and you wanna troubleshoot what could possibly be causing it, I'll have a video link above, also below in the description. It'll be your troubleshooting process for a computer that's not turning on. As you notice here, you have an M.2 port right there for a solid state drive and then another M.2 port right here. So you have two M.2 ports. These can take either a 2242, as you can see right here, or the longer 2280 solid state drive Gen 4s. So I don't know what you guys have stock in your computer. This one was a 256 gigabyte. Uh, so below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts, I'll try to have a couple different upgrade options, a terabyte, a two terabyte option, in case you guys are looking to upgrade these solid state drives. The way to work this, you have a single screw right there for the 2242s. After you take that screw out, this can be pulled to the right out of this port. And if you have the longer 2280s, your screw hole is right there. And for this one, your screw hole is right here with that smaller one being in the middle as well. And I guess the last side note here, guys, when you're installing a new solid state drive, you're gonna have to install an operating system onto that drive in order to use your computer. I will have two different links below in the description. Uh, there'll be a video showing you how to install Windows 10, and then another video showing you how to install Windows 11 
depending on which one you guys want. Your RAM is right here under this metal plate. After getting that metal plate up, you can see some thermal pads here to help with heat, but it's gonna reveal two different RAM ports right here. The way you work RAM is it's held in by two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. The way to get the RAM stick out is to gently pry those apart from each other away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release. It will oftentimes pop up a little bit, and then you can slide it out of, of the port right here. To get the RAM back in, if you notice, there's a long end and a short end. So you can't put the RAM in upside down. You can only get it in the correct way. Once you get it in, make sure it's nice and flush and even. And then you press down in the center and these metal arms will latch onto it and secure it in place. Now to shut out the RAM specs here, this computer has a max of 32 gigabytes RAM, which means to max it out, you would need a 16 gigabyte stick in each port to get your max RAM. Uh, this is DDR5, 4800 megahertz, uh, 5600 megahertz in dual channel mode. So the RAM stick that was in here was PC5 5600B. I will have that information below in the description. I'll also put some RAM upgrade options below in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and tools. And I do tell people very often in a computer, um, if you're limited on budget on upgrading it, RAM is one of the cheapest and easiest things to upgrade, and it's a big player in the speed of your computer. So if nothing else, I always recommend at least maxing out the RAM in your computer for best performance. This is your Wi-Fi card here on the left underneath this solid state drive port. It's held on by a single screw right there. When you take that screw up, this see-through guard will also come up with it. And then you can unplug the Wi-Fi antenna wires here the black and the gray, those are just snaps. Those will snap straight up and off of the Wi-Fi card, and then you can pull the Wi-Fi card out of this port right here. To get those back on, those antenna wire, they do have to be at a perfect straight 90 degree angle to get those snapped on, and they are breakable. Um, you can put too much force on there very easily and, and, and bend those snaps um, damage them if they're not at the right angle. So take your time. It may take a while if you're not used to it, but you can snap those back on. Um, I will have Wi-Fi card specs below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will also have a Wi-Fi card replacement option below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and tools. Uh, last thing I'll shout out as far as your Wi-Fi if your computer is working properly but not picking up any Wi-Fi, it is possible that your Wi-Fi card could be bad and could need a replacement, but it also could be something else. Um, it could be a driver issue, an update issue. Um, so I will include above, also below in the description, a video link. It'll be a tutorial on how to fix a computer that's not picking up any Wi-Fi because, again, it may not necessarily be your Wi-Fi card. This is your CMOS battery right here. It's wrapped in black electrical tape. It's stuck down to the computer by double-sided tape, and it plugs in right here. So if you're here to replace it, you can easily just pop that up with your fingers. Again, it's only double-sided tape, and then you would unplug it from here. Just like the battery plug, there's a grip on either side, so you can use a pry tool to jimmy that out of that port. I'll have a replacement CMOS battery option below in the description in that link that I told you about with all the tools and replacement parts. If you're here to just reset BIOS, then you don't need to physically remove the battery. You can leave it stuck down there. You would just need to unplug it from the motherboard. Uh, maybe 15, 20 seconds should be sufficient to reset your BIOS settings. One quick side note with resetting BIOS, this will only reset BIOS settings, guys. This will not, in most cases, reset your BIOS password. And then last side note to the video, uh, some of you may be here because your computer is dead, it's not turning on, um, and you may be trying this because you heard this can sometimes revive a dead computer. If that's why you're here, there are other reasons why your computer may not turn on. I'll have a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a troubleshooting video on how to troubleshoot a laptop that's not turning on, uh, doesn't show any signs of life, and it'll take you through the most common causes why your laptop may be that way.
Okay, so now that the battery has been removed, we have access to the speaker wires. So these speakers are not actually screwed down. These little white rubber washers that go over the posts, that's for sound insulation, but that's the only way they're held down. So you can wiggle those speakers right off of those posts and get them off. To unrun the wire, there's some tape holding it down at various places. So be careful, but you can just peel that tape up. Um, and then this speaker here is the one that plugs into the motherboard right there. And just like your battery, there is a grip on either side of that plug that you can use your fingernails or a pry tool and wiggle that out. Speaker wires are even more fragile than battery wires. So definitely try to wiggle that out. Don't pull on those wires. When you're putting your speakers back down, make sure um, you put these wires exactly where they are because remember this bottom case is, is, is gonna clip on there and all these little clips here, you, you see, those are gonna snap onto the bottom case. So it's very common for people just to lay this however they feel like and then when they're trying to force their bottom case on, they actually break these wires. So just make sure that it's run right through here, right around there, exactly how it's supposed to be when you put your speakers back. Last thing I'll shout out as far as speakers, if you guys are trying to troubleshoot some sound issues, um, most likely if you're hearing just really junk bass every time the bass kicks in, most likely your speakers are blown. They do need to be replaced. But if you're getting other sound issues where they work sometimes, not other times, maybe the sound isn't as loud as, as, as it could be, it may not be a speaker issue. It may be a driver or an update or a software issue. I will have a link above, also below in the description on how to make sure all your drivers are up to date, all the software, all, all the system updates are run to make sure that it's not that before you come in here and try to physically remove and replace your speakers. Your heatsink assembly is up here along with both fans. Now be careful on the fans. They have very fragile wires. You'll see this fan on the right of the screen plugs into the motherboard right here above the solid state drive. And this one plugs into the motherboard right here. Just like the battery, there's two grips on either side of these plugs, so you can remove them with your fingernails or a pry tool. And then you'll notice a screw here. You'll notice a screw here. And then on the heat sink, you have these two screws here, and then these three here. Uh, watch out for these stickers on any computer repair. These are, they are various kinds of warranty void stickers. So if you damage these stickers, if you show evidence that you've been in this far in the computer, it'll void part or all of your warranty. So in any computer repair, keep an eye out for that. And, and if you see them, and if your computer is still under warranty, consider getting a warranty repair instead of DIY um, if you wanna preserve your warranty. But after you remove those screws, you can pick up your fans and your heatsink assembly. If you're here because of an overheating issue and you wanna give this whole assembly a thorough cleaning, um, and if you wanna reapply thermal paste, there'll be a video link above. I'll also include it below in the description. It'll be a tutorial on how to fix an overheating situation uh, because you definitely wanna clean these fans out really well, these vents. Um, and you want to clean off all the old thermal paste before putting new stuff down. You don't want new paste on top of old paste. And then you also don't want to put too much thermal paste down. So like I said, there'll be a whole tutorial on how to do that below in the description. But this is how you would access your fans, your heatsink assembly, CPU, GPU areas in the LOQ 15i Gamer. So that's the video guys, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description, it could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do, I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share, subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials, and for those of you that wanna support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.